what is out there is absolutely unknown and still, I mean, we have no evidence that there is uh, something out there. It's extremely possible, it's a possibility, but we, we have no idea of what and how it would appear. Ask Different. The podcast by the Einstein Foundation with Nancy Fisher. And I want to start with a little crash course. Astronomy for dummies, kind of. This is planet Earth we're living on. We are part of the solar system, including the sun and seven other planets. And the solar system is part of our galaxy, the Milky Way, with hundreds of billions of stars. And if we zoom out further, we can see besides our galaxy, Milky Way, there are probably hundreds of billions of more galaxies in this massive thing called universe. So you can decide yourself if there could be other life than ours in this universe. And I would say probably there is. Today we want to add some facts to this old question of mankind and Riccardo Urso will help us. He is an Italian researcher, studied chemistry in Catania and today he lives and works in Berlin as a part of the research group Elsässer Lab for Experimental Biophysics and Space Sciences at the Freie Universität Berlin. And Riccardo Urso is an Einstein International Postdoctoral Fellow And I'm very happy that he can join us today. Welcome to this episode of Ask Different. Hello, Ricardo. Thank you. Hello, Nancy. Nice to meet you. So if I think of life in space, there is immediately probably the most known cliche, the little green guy with bulgy eyes flying yeah. around in a spaceship. <laughs> What do you imagine if you think of life in space? What's in your head? Yeah, that's extremely tough to imagine something um, without, you know, uh, keeping in mind who we are. And I mean, we are on the earth and the only example of life we know is the Uh, life we see on our planet. So it's extremely hard to imagine something very different from that. And that's why, I mean, mentioning the uh, little green men, <laughs> they're actually pictured as little green men, right? But mm -hmm. uh, I honestly wouldn't know what uh, aliens would uh, look like. And uh, this is also because life is strongly connected to the conditions that uh, we find on planets. And the conditions on Earth are uh, the, the ones we, we live every day are the conditions that uh, made us evolve as we are. So life is strongly connected and depend on the condition on, on, uh, on, on planets. And if we don't know the conditions of, of planets, we cannot say what life looked like. Uh, what we are looking for is, uh, and what I can imagine of being um, something that we can achieve in the next future, is to uh, find very simple uh, living organisms, maybe, like bacteria, that we know to be present everywhere on Earth, literally everywhere. And so might be, you know, not as nice as uh, meeting uh, the monsters that we see on, on, on <laughs> movies, on Alien, for example. But uh, can you imagine how amazing it would be and, and what uh, shock maybe it would be for our society to know that we are not alone in the universe, it's going to be uh, such a big thing for the humankind. You know, we, we, it was extremely tough to be first picture, to, you know, to first picture the Earth at the center of the universe and then discover that, oh, wait, uh, we are not actually at the center of anything. Mm. We orbit around a, a, a star and the star itself orbit around the galaxy. And so uh, it's going to be amazing to uh, even find a the simplest bacteria out there. If we speak of life, what are we actually talking about, like scientifically spoken? What's the definition for you? Yeah, that's uh, not easy. Uh, philosophers are debating about it, even when we, I mean, what, what is the, the question? What, what are we looking for? What is life? Uh, there are several uh, definitions and all of them, I would say, deal with a system that can... Um, that is able of reproduction that can ad adapt to the environmental conditions and that can uh, self-sustain, can eat something, and that can uh, transform energy. Um, this is what we say and what we think life uh, could be based on. Uh, but again, this is a definition that depends on life as we know it. And I'm uh, always... Uh, 
um, meet people asking me what if life is something else, something that we uh, we don't see. Well, the, the point is that, that you know, at that point we couldn't even find it. So we need a definition uh, that might be wrong and that will uh, for sure change in the, uh, with time, but we need a definition for something to look for. Very interesting that there's no real definition for what life is somewhere else except on our planet is, but let's, let's stay in this kind of abstract way of thinking under which conditions could life exist on other planets. We don't really know. What we know, if we look at the only example of life we have, the life on Earth, we find life everywhere, in the toughest conditions, at the uh, highest or lower temperature possible. Uh, we also find bacteria or organisms that can live in presence of ionizing radiation and survive much better than what we would do. What we will look for depends, again, on the environment of the planet. And it's actually going to be a surprise. <laughs> I think that there, is people, there are people studying um, how life can adapt to extreme conditions uh, by taking, for example, these uh, bacteria living in extreme environments on Earth and trying to understand if they could survive, for example, in the typical, typical condition of Mars. And, but what is out there is absolutely unknown and still, I mean... We have no evidence that there is uh, something out there. It's extremely possible as a possibility, but we, we have no idea of what and how it would appear. You just how mentioned it would like look like. Mm, sorry, you just mentioned the planet Mars. So, which planets do have living conditions similar to planet Earth? Do we know that already? And so we, we are looking for planets like the Earth, and we find uh, planets like or let's say not like, but that might be similar to, uh, that might show conditions similar to the Earth around other stars. We actually look for those planets because um, uh, they are most likely, um, they, they could host life uh, that might be similar to the life that our planet hosts. And uh, the, the, the requisite for life The life we know, it is water. So what we look for around other stars are planets that have a, a temperature that can host liquid water on the surface. Um, talking about the solar system, uh, water is actually uh, present in many uh, planets and moons also, but mostly in the uh, frozen phase, so as solid as rock. And that kind of water cannot be of any help for life. What we also look for is liquid water. We might have found some liquid water in the uh, interior of Mars. And what we know is that there are um, satellite moons of uh, Jupiter that host uh, oceans beneath the uh, icy uh, surface. And that's actually where uh, space scientists are looking for life. For example, in these uh, environments, we imagine that this liquid water might host chemical reaction that gave birth to maybe very simple life. And then the question is how to detect this life beneath the crust of ice that is kilometers uh, thick. You're saying that as if it would be so easy to go in front of the door and look for these planets, but it's such a hard task in everyday life, I imagine, to look for, I mean, water on other planets billions of kilometers away. So how do we have to imagine your, your working conditions uh, to work on this big question of mankind in everyday life in your lab? How are you doing that? Yeah, so um, what we actually do is trying to understand how the building blocks of life can form in space. Uh, so we do not look for life itself. We look for those compounds, those molecules, those Uh, groups of atoms of particles that might be the might have been the building block building blocks of life on on earth uh, we know that life is based on uh, big molecules like the rna or the dna and we for example are looking and trying to understand if the bricks of dna and rna can form in space And why do we do that? Because if these bricks can form in space and if they for example can form while 
the sun formed while the earth formed, then we know that the sun and the earth form as other stars and other planets are forming. And this means that also the chemistry leading to the building blocks of life uh, takes place in the same way. So these molecular bricks of life could form also on other planets, on other, in other, um, around other stars. And then the question is, if they can form in space, can, how can they be delivered on, on planetary surfaces? And then, you know, find their environment to react and then chemistry taking place and bring into um, more complex molecules and maybe to life. So um, what we deal with is actually understanding where, how and how much of these molecules can form at the very beginning of the star formation process. And one example that you mentioned and uh, we, we, I mentioned as well, water. We know that water is on the earth and we are basically made of water. The water that we drink actually and that our body is made of form it at the beginning of the solar system in space. So. Uh, thanks to a process that happened uh, f five billion years ago, uh, life is now possible on our planet. So this is a very simple ex uh, example. Now, uh, life is based, of course, on water, but on many other molecules that are extremely important, mm. for example, molecules containing carbon. So looking for these species in space, looking for these molecules in space, we might try to understand how complex, how rich is uh, the chemistry around stars, and if we find molecules that we consider building blocks of life around those stars, well, then we might have some elements to say that life is possible also somewhere else in the universe. I also read you you work in planetary simulation chambers to simulate space, because, of course, you can't go to space every day for your daily work. Can you take us there? Can you describe to us how it looks like in these chambers? So it's uh, maybe less fascinating than what you can imagine, and hmm. they are basically boxes of stainless steel where we um, try to uh, recreate the main condition of space. In space there is no atmosphere, so uh, there is vacuum. Uh, there is a strong ionizing radiation emitted by the sun or the stars. Um, and it's cold. We are used to the temperature uh, here on the Earth. In space, the temperature is way lower. It's just a few uh, degrees above zero. And anyway, in these conditions, chemistry can happen. In planets, it depends on the planet we're talking about. Mars, for example, has an average temperature of minus 90 uh, degrees, and we can just simulate this temperature in our uh, planetary uh, simulation uh, facility, as well as the radiation that hits the soil of Mars and possibly the living beings on the soil of Mars. Until we, until we, we, we don't have any uh, proof of their existence, we also want to understand if they could survive in the condition of our planet, and we can do that uh, with our facility, as well as studying the atmosphere of other planets. So reproduce the condition of atmospheres that could uh, host life beyond the solar system. The one thing is the work in the lab you were also just describing in these yeah, very cold steel chambers. <laughs> um, the other thing is, for example, the NASA is doing that. They are sending missions to the Mars to find out amongst which conditions molecules can survive there. Do you also do that? Do you send samples to space? First of all, our laboratory work is uh, related to what happens in uh, space missions and astronomical observations. So we try to reproduce what actually uh, space missions tell us, the condition of space. And we are also um, uh, sending actual samples in space in the next years, uh, specifically on, on board of the International Space Station. There will be uh, those molecules, for example, that we consider building blocks of life that will be exposed to the radiation of the sun. Uh, on the Earth, radiation uh, is uh, filtered by the atmosphere. So to achieve the real emission of particles of the sun, we have to go um, uh, beyond the atmosphere and we use the International Space Station to expose uh, amino acids or sugar, nucleobases, those molecules that make life as we know it, to understand if they can survive the conditions in space. 
So you're gonna do send these things there in some years. That's what I understood. Was it correct? Yeah, exactly. The spe the, the the samples will be produced here in uh, in Berlin or in uh, laboratories of uh, our partners, and then we'll fly to the International Space Station. They will spend about one year up there. And uh, and then they will be they will come back to give us the possibility to analyze the samples, and we will have not only these uh, building blocks of life, but also living organisms um, that will be exposed to the radiation of the sun, and we will take photographs of them from time to time to understand what happens to these little uh, living forms. It's a very long and a very complex process. So I thought when I prepared this interview, I thought of people selling food or constructing cars for a living. Your job is to search for life. I know with a little bit more complex, not only life, but for that in the universe, which is such a big task. How satisfying is this for you if you leave your lab every day and you still didn't find anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say that, you know, I, when I started my career, I was, I mean, as, as a child, I was always fascinated by space science. And then I have to say that being a, a daily activity, um, what you actually deal with is not anymore... Uh, well, let's let's now look for life. It's uh, mostly um, the, 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 the the everyday life in laboratory, and is extremely challenging. And uh, on the other hand, even a small result means a lot to us if we are able to interpret something that is observed in space. We can prove not only that our experiment is working, but also that the processes that we simulate in laboratory and then that can, we can study in much higher detail than what can be possible in space are actually happening. And they, those processes might be um, at, the, at the basis of the formation of the building blocks of life. So uh, it's, I have to say that it's uh, not frustrating. And from time to time, we have confirmation that what we're doing is right. For example, when complex molecules that, again, might be building blocks of life are found in meteorites, that are uh, objects that fall on the earth and that, are, that formed when the earth was still forming. And in, in these stones, we find molecules like amino acids or nucleobases, so these molecules that are uh, parts of proteins and of um, DNA. So when we find this kind of data and we can uh, analyze this kind of samples in our uh, lab, is extremely rewarding and totally worth Uh, totally worth our activity. You just said you were already fascinated by space as a child. Do you remember what was your fascination back then? Was it like, I want to be an, an astronaut and go on a spaceship? Yeah. How was that? Yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I mean, I think as, as many, many, uh, many children, I, I mean, yeah, my, 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 my dream was uh, be becoming uh, an astronaut. And I was also fascinated by astrophysics, by science in general. I, all, I, was, uh, I was very curious. I wanted to, to understand how, uh, you know, the, the, the small details. I mean, I, I remember I was uh, and the nightmare of my parents because I would open all the toys and all the toys, you know, unscrew everything because I was curious and I wanted to understand how things were made of. And it's a little bit like that. Still now, I want to understand the uh, small details on how matter is formed, the matter that forms our planet, but also ourselves. A question that I'm asking many researchers in many fields, but the answer can always be helpful for everyone. What is the most fascinating thing about your job, even though the work is so complex, the way you just describe it? Trying to deal with such a big question if life can be possible elsewhere in the universe is maybe one of the uh, strongest motivations and um, I have to say that uh, we, you know the, 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 as scientists we really go into the details of what we do and that connects to what I was saying before you know we, we run the experiments we're looking for a specific thing but then what we actually do not only what I do, but what the community is trying to do is to answer to such a big question that is there since the humankind. And uh, the possibility that uh, my, with my activity I could contribute only to a very small you know, detail and, and trying to you know, move science forward in the direction of answering 
to the question if we are alone is a strong um, and enormous motivation. How big are the chances? What do you think in your career that you will find something building blocks of life one day in the next, let's say, 40 years? What do you think? So about the building blocks of life, we've been lucky enough to find some of them. Uh, then the fact that they are building blocks of life, as we know, it doesn't mean that they could easily bring to, to, to life. Um, but what I always uh, try to keep in mind is that I don't, you know, I am just part of it. The nice thing of science is that we all move together. Uh, we are a community. There is not a single scientist that makes the difference. And all together we move uh, in, 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 in achieving something that is way bigger than what the genius could do uh, working alone. And we can do that also thanks to the facilities that we uh, that are available right now um, with, with the space missions and there is there are so many people behind this uh, this this research that talking about the achievement the achievements of a single person would be just you know uh, reducing it to something extremely simple you started your career of your of researching in italy in um, catania you went to paris now you're in berlin what's different here speaking about working environment mm, that um, it's you know it's nice because when when i left my country i was uh, afraid you know i mean it's you, you have to, to face different culture and uh, colleagues with different preparation and now after almost five years i'm abroad i can just say that you know Uh, it's at the end we are all the same. There might be differences in the way we behave, and you know, in our tradition, of course. Um, but it's uh, it's an experience that, let's say, makes me understand that science goes beyond what are the cliché, the stereotypes, and uh, the scientific method is the same everywhere. So, um, by a scientific point of view, I would say it gave me a lot working here in Berlin at the Department of Physics in France at the um, French, Space, uh, French Space Agency in terms of opportunity and to expand my network. And the nice thing is also that, you know, it's a scientific environment where I am forced to meet physicists, astronomers, biologists, uh, geologists working in planetary science. So um, it's extremely enriching and uh, doing it abroad, doing it in different countries was such a blessing, something that I will, um, you know, I would keep forever in my personal baggage. If there is maybe a, a child or, let's say, more realistic, a teenager listening to us that has the dream to become an astronaut or to work on space topics somehow, what would you suggest him or her? To keep believing it, uh, it might be tough. Um, you know, the scientific... Um, Uh, career is not easy. There is a lot of math, um, physics, and um, from time to time you're really, you know, uh, saying, okay, I cannot make it. But if you really uh, believe in what you're doing, if you really want to do that, there are no obstacles. There is nothing that can stop you, and you just have to push and keep, uh, and, and, and keep going. So just believe in yourself, uh, work on your self-confidence and uh, expand, you know, you just go leave your comfort zone, do activities that make you feel alive and don't be afraid of math and don't be afraid of physics because at the end it's, it's just what, you know, the, our way of interpreting nature and it's nothing <laughs> you can be afraid of. So just follow your dreams and... Don't be afraid of, you know, of anything. What are the activities that are keeping you alive? My main hobby is m music. I play guitar and I do quite some uh, sport. Um, so that's what it's going to happen after, uh, you know, when, when I leave the, the lab, usually I just go running or I do some physical activity. I have one last question. So... We were speaking about that, what many kids have as their dreams to become an astronaut, to fly to space. Is that actually a wish of yours, to go to Mars, to go to one of these hidden planets one day? Of course. <laughs> of course it is. It's, it would be extremely, extremely uh, exciting, you know, and... 
Uh, I mean, yeah, of course, I, I would love it. And it's just, you know, being in contact with uh, something that we, we, we consider to be so far away and being in contact with space, uh, it's, it's just a dream. And yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> Keep on believing. Huh? That's what we learned from this um, session. <laughs> yeah. So we spoke about... <laughs> The Building Blocks of Life in Space and Life in Space with Riccardo Urso, Italian chemist looking for life in the universe and last but not least an Einstein International Postdoctoral Fellow that works for the Elsässer Lab Research Group at Freie Universität Berlin. Riccardo, thank you so much for your time today. This was another episode of Ask Different, the Einstein Foundation podcast. My name is Nancy Fischer and you can find this and all the other episodes on a regular basis at Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all the other platforms. Thanks for your interest, no matter on which galaxy you listen to us. Ask Different. The podcast by the Einstein Foundation.